Hey guys, Steve with Savant PCs. Today, I just resurfaced the wasteboard of the CNC. Looks nice and flat. Now I'm gonna show you how I usually make my little L bracket to uh, zero out the X and Y axis. To make it easier when I wanna put new parts in here to get machined, I could just butt it into the corner. Do less work uh, having to zero the machine. I'm also testing out this new microphone. Sorry for the noise, because you're probably going to hear glitch bite it. I don't know why I love the smell of that stuff. So I usually use an eighth inch end mill when I do this. And the reason being, I cannot figure out why, but when I use an eighth inch end mill, after I cut this out, I'll show you, I do a guideline down here and then subtract the radius from the eighth inch end mill over to the left to get my zero for X and then Y. And anytime I've used done this with a quarter inch end mill or smaller than an eighth, I always end up with some kind of disparity left or right. I can't figure out why, but heck, if it works with the eighth inch, I'm cool with that. I'm not going to worry about it any farther. I spent all day yesterday rebuilding the website. If you check it out, please let me know if you find any errors because I'm still working on it, that's for sure. So please be... Uh, <laughs> Please be kind in your comments. I'm still getting the hang of this whole YouTube thing. Uh, trying to figure out what I want to do as far as videos. This is going to be more like a live diary, so to speak. Well, let's see, okay. Got the end mill in. I'm going to zero it on the uh, stock. is my life. You guys want to be a PC builder custom part maker? <laughs> no, that's actually really fun once you get the hang of some of this stuff. Especially as somebody who loves art. And some of you guys might have seen the uh, hack job I did to get this thing, the dust boot with the new Z-axis slider up. <laughs> if you wanna know how I did it, let me know. I'll do a more of in-depth review, but it's on um, it's on the Carbide 3D forum. And I think it's on Instagram as well. But let's see how this works. The RPM right, it's right. Tools loaded, zeros there. I'm sure I forgot something, as I always do. I don't want to say always, I'm not that bad. But that doesn't look like it's going far back enough. Oh, let me just shut up. <laughs> yeah. See here, you can hear the noise when it moves forward and backward. It's because this thing sways by the way it's made to connect to the X boot. It has, or the X plate. That's too much sway. But that's a perfect example of it right there. I don't know how well you can hear the difference, but I can stand in here. Oh, that's nice. It got just to the paper. So that was actually the perfect depth. And that's good because I used to use the paper method, but now I can eyeball it. I don't think I could call myself much of an artist if I couldn't do that right. Just get a clean getaway from it. This 
See if you could see the cut lines where it didn't hit the tape but it still got the paper on this. You did really good. <laughs> so what a great way to demonstrate the video. Perfect cut. Not too deep, not too um, shallow to where I'm cutting pieces of acrylic off of it, but absolutely perfect. And this method of work holding, using this tape and super glue, it may seem ridiculous. Honestly, everyone I saw online that, that recommended this method of using masking tape, CA super glue, and an activator all thought it would be a crazy idea until they tried it. Um, prior to this, a lot of us use double-sided tape like carpet tape. The problem is when that carpet tape gets into the end mill, if it wasn't a perfect cut, like it went too deep, it just gunks up so bad. It gets all along the surface or the, uh, the side of the material where it was cut. You have to spend so much time. And if you're making products out of acrylic and you're CNC milling and you're not laser cutting, that adds so much time to your day. So it's not to say this won't gunk up, but it's a lot harder to do because it's so thin. And that's what I didn't want to happen, but oh well. Yeah, I'll live with it. You see the surface. I love this um, when there's a freshly surfaced waste board. And these, on, these lines are from the razor that I just used. Reminds me of my uncle tried to teach my dad and I how to golf one time. And he was trying to teach us how to do this. I don't know what the terminology is, but how to hit the ball with an iron or a wedge, whatever, the one that makes it go up. <laughs> and in his demonstration, he had nailed it right into the hole. It's like, what a perfect uh, way to demonstrate it. It's like this thing. So here's the part where, where I was talking about where you have to have, or at least me, I have to have an eighth inch end mill to make this work. So what I did is I drilled screw holes in I'm going to have to hit it on the drill press because I didn't edit the file. This hole obviously is useless and maybe I'll just skip it. I don't know if you could hear that, but Glitch just sneezed on my, on my neck. <laughs> So I'm over here laughing. The metal provider came, but they had two four by eight sheets, unsheared. So when I talked to them, they said they would do the shearing for free. It's a new company I'm working with, and so far they're gonna save me a lot. So I'm really looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I drilled these holes a little bit bigger, but uh, just a funny story. <laughs> Uh, either way, they'll be back tomorrow, I'm sure, with my metal. So as you can see, I'm getting a little light. I got more scrap over there and stuff, but you know. So... The trick is with this acrylic, you don't want to go too deep because it'll just cut right. It'll crack this stuff so easily. I like using it because I have scrap and it's just the right thickness to make something like this work. And this should be good. I don't think there's going to be enough sway. There always is on the end, but... You can tell I'm not used to... <laughs> I'm not used to working with a microphone strapped to me. Uh, I feel like I'm moving awkward. All right. So this is where this will come into play. Let's see, jog, go back to where it was. So I usually keep this off when I do this just to get a good eye. Okay, so. I'm so happy too, it's finally nice outside. 
nice as in sunny and not freezing. So we had like two weeks ago, it was 80 degrees here in Charlotte and just so nice. So it teased us and making us think spring was there already, but then it pulled a fast one. Like it snowed yesterday morning. I was asleep when it happened, but come on now. Let's get some spring. So I get it right over as close to the edge as I can. I don't want to take off too much. I just want it to be right where I need it to be. Believe it or not, that's actually X0 already. So this will be good. It's not like it matters. I would have set it to zero anyway. Get it just a hair off the surface. I don't feel like damaging my wasteboard, which was just freshly surfaced. So what I do is I turn it on, put the speed up on the jog, and get a nice fresh line, only moving in the one direction, for obvious reasons. That's good right there. So that's telling the machine it's at point zero, but that's the center of the end mill, which is an eighth inch end mill. Half of that is a sixteenth of an inch, so I just raise it up a little bit. Put the movement down to point zero one inches per step, and I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, and then put it down to a thousand. And then one, two, three. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you'll see it says X. Well, like I said, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, X is 0 0.063 negative. So I set zero for X, and now the center of the end mill is at the very edge of that acrylic. So now I'll do the same for Y. So I set zero for Y. So right here is point zero for Y. I'll hit it and then we'll go do the same thing. We'll subtract. If it doesn't work, oh well. So I come back over here, turn the spindle off, raise it up a bit, and then same thing. Make my movement down to hundredths of an inch, come back six steps, and then six thou. It's uh, sixteenth of an inch negative on the Y. So I hit set zero for Y. And then every time I turn the machine on, X and Y zero point, including the Z, will always be the same. So long as I don't make a change to the machine, I adjust the belts or have to do anything else, which I feel like I'm always doing. But uh, just to show you or give you an idea, it'll probably be hard to tell from that angle. But I'm going to move it right here. So now it's in the center. When I tell the machine to go to the current offset for X and Y, it goes right where I want it to go, right into the corner, which is these inner lines point directly to that exact spot within a thousandth of an inch, we hope. But to give you a better idea, I don't, again, I don't know how well you can see it, but um, I don't know why I just did that. That was weird. I don't think I've ever seen it do that. So right there, I mean, that's as close as you get. If I look down it, I mean, that's dead center there. It's dead center there. 
works best with the eighth of an inch end mill. I don't know why. Every time I've done this with a quarter inch end mill, uh, I think it's the uh, the X that ends up being off by four hundredths of an inch, which it's not that big of a deal, but it's the thickness of this sheet metal uh, to give you an idea. When I'm making something like an acrylic reservoir and I have to have that O-ring slot, it's 0 0.05 inches away from the wall of the reservoir on the inside. So if I put that piece in there to do the other side to get the uh, O-ring slot, it ends up screwing an entire piece of acrylic and I have pulled my hair out. <laughs> Terrible posture. <laughs> I have pulled my hair out over and over again trying to get those acrylic reservoirs to where I could I could put these things in and I could start cranking them out. Every time I've gone to make one I've had some some kind of problem. Now at the end of the day a lot of times it was my own fault. They're complicated pieces but I've been getting less and less complicated with the tool pass. I've been getting less and less complicated with how they're made. As an example I'm no longer thread tapping the acrylic for the uh, excuse me the half inch piece that's in the middle because thread tapping acrylic with the small screws that you find in computer cases are it's just a pain in the butt it's a waste of time and buying a thread tapping end mill to do something on such a small scale I don't know that I trust it and they're very very expensive to get those kinds of end mills but that's just me ranting Aside from that, this is a really good tip. So if I home the machine, let me go ahead and raise up the uh, Z axis. Just to give you an idea, I'll just wrap it back here. So it's back here. I'm going to turn the machine off. I don't know if you heard that. It's the laptop saying it's no longer connected. Turn the machine back on. Connect the cutter. When I go to jog, of course it has to home the machine. So it homes the Z. And then the X and Y. Good to go. So, rapid position. Back to offset X and Y and it should take me exactly where I need it to go. Boom. Great. Wonderful. Now it's time to make some stuff. Back to work. But anyway, that's just one of the things I've learned. Uh, I think I had uh, first got that idea from it wasn't in human fabrication. Now I can't even think of his name. I could see it. It's a problem with photographic memory. You suck at names, but you can remember the face. Uh, if I think of it, I'll let you know. But uh, one of the guys on Instagram told me about this kind of an idea. And it took me a while to implement it, but it is so much faster when I'm making parts on a rapid scale. So I could just throw it in, hit the job, so long as my tool paths are good on the, uh, on the cam software, I'm good. But anyway, thanks for watching. This is probably one of the most boring videos you watched. Glitch is inside because I have the garage door open. But let me stop ranting. Y'all have a good one. Like and subscribe. And, uh, sure.